In today's Private Pilot Ground Lesson 1.7 on the 7-6 Ground School Chick channel, we're going to talk about how an airplane turns. You will need to know this information for your checkride and your FAA written exam. As we discussed in Lesson 1.1, we can roll the aircraft about the longitudinal axis using a side-to-side -side rolling motion of the yoke. This controls the ailerons. When we roll the control yoke to the right, the right aileron raises, the left aileron lowers. The aileron that lowers creates more lift and causes that wing to rise. When we roll the control yoke to the left, the opposite happens. We also spent some time talking about lift in our previous lessons, but let's look at lift in a more in-depth way. When our airplane is flying straight and level, the lift that is produced goes straight up and down. This is called vertical lift. When we roll the aircraft, we start producing some lift that moves laterally. This is called the horizontal component of lift, and it is what makes our airplane turn. Although we roll the airplane by using the ailerons, we also need the rudder pedals to yaw the airplane in order to turn smoothly and in a coordinated way. This is because although the lowered aileron produces more lift, it also produces more drag. This causes what we call adverse yaw, which can happen anytime we use the ailerons. Adverse yaw is the tendency of an airplane to yaw or turn its nose in the opposite direction of the intended turn. It happens because as the ailerons are used to roll the aircraft, the downward deflected aileron creates more drag on that wing, causing it to slow down and generate less lift compared to the other wing. This imbalance in lift and drag creates a yawing moment in the opposite direction of the intended turn. This is called a skidding turn as the aircraft's tail slides outward of the turn and we see the turn coordinator look like this. To counteract adverse yaw, we need to apply coordinated rudder by noticing where the ball is displaced towards on the turn coordinator and applying rudder pressure on the side where the ball is displaced towards. In aviation, we call this stepping on the ball. We can also have a slipping turn. This occurs when insufficient rudder input is applied in relation to the bank angle. As a result, the aircraft's nose points outward of the turn, leading to a lateral imbalance and a potential loss of altitude. To avoid slipping turns, we need to practice coordinated flight by applying the correct amount of rudder input to match the bank angle and keep the aircraft's flight path aligned with the intended turn. This ensures smooth and controlled maneuvering during flight. Flying coordinated minimizes the risk of stalling, spinning, or losing control of the aircraft. It helps maintain stability and reduces the chance of entering dangerous flight conditions. Coordinated flight also reduces drag and improves overall aircraft performance. It allows for smoother maneuvering, better fuel efficiency, and optimized airspeed control. Additionally, when flying with instruments, maintaining coordination ensures accurate indications and reliable instrument readings, enhancing situational awareness and navigation. I hope today's lesson was helpful. If so, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future private pilot ground school lessons. And if you're interested in doing your private pilot ground school online directly with me, and have me sign you off to take your FAA private pilot written exam, please reach out at chicksuflyofficial at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.